Welcome to Her and Boss, the podcast created by graduates to help young women find their inner entrepreneur. I'm your host, Nikki, and today I'm joined by three very special guests, Iman Maloudi, Brianna Norris, and Elizabeth Feldstein. Iman, Brianna, and Liz are all co-founders of Augment Bionics, a medical device startup founded at the University of Edinburgh in 2019. The company was originally set up to produce affordable bionic prosthetic arms, but the team have done some amazing things in the last few months, printing PPE for the NHS and other international frontline workers. In addition to her work on Augment Bionics, Iman has a degree in neuroscience and started a socially responsible investment fund during her first year of university called Prosper Social Finance. Brianna and Liz both have master's degrees in chemistry and are working full-time in graduate programs at Nova Nordisk and Johnson Matthey while continuing to work on the commercial team of Augment Bionics. In this episode, we talk about why university is the perfect time to try out entrepreneurship, the reasons why young women don't see themselves as entrepreneurial, and the importance of extracurriculars when applying for jobs. Let's get started, right? So quick fire questions. I'm going to ask each of you one. Brianna, what's the weirdest food you've ever tried? Um, snow fungus. What is that? It's a kind of, it's a kind of um, fungus that's sweet and you have it in a soup okay. in China. Fun? Gross. Fun? Mm. Okay. Iman, if you could have dinner with any famous person, who would it be? All I can think about are like people who are problematic. <laughs> I will say Nigella Lawson just because um, I have been listening to a lot of her podcasts. Nice. Um, and Liz, if you had to eat one thing for the rest of your life, what would it be? Ooh, um, definitely pasta. <laughs> pasta. Okay. You can tell I'm recording at lunchtime because they're all food themes. <laughs> so really excited to have you guys all on the podcast today because you're all Edinburgh Uni alumna, which I am as well. Um, but obviously throughout the podcast, we'll kind of learn a bit more about what you guys did at uni and how you ended up in all these really cool places. Um, but first I just wanted to talk quickly about Augment Bionics, which is a startup that you're all co-founders of. So Brianna, could you tell me a little bit about the original Augment Bionics idea and then what you guys have been up to in the last few months? Yeah, sure. So Augment started probably in 2018 as a engineering project at the uni and what we do is build 3D printed prosthetic forearms. And in 2018, when it was purely an engineering project, they decided they needed a commercial side to the, to the idea in order to launch it as more than just a small university project. And so that's kind of where we came in. And throughout our kind of final years of uni, we took the small engineering project and kind of became a proper startup or a proper company. And through our final year of uni, we started winning competitions and kind of getting some recognition in both Scotland and kind of greater in the UK, uh, which was really exciting. And then once coronavirus happened, we decided to uh, change tack a little bit because we have a lot of smart people in our engineering side and kind of a, a network that we'd grown throughout being Augment Bionics. And we decided to change our direction into looking at PPE and trying to address the really uh, pretty scary um, lack of PPE in the UK for our frontline healthcare workers. So we could started 3D printing face shields uh, mm -hmm. out of a school in London where one of our engineers happened to um, be isolating at his home with his parents. And from then we just, it just took off and we have been making, we've made over 60,000 face shields and yeah, donated so many face shields to the NHS and other frontline healthcare workers in the UK and now even abroad. It's so cool. Honestly, I follow you guys on, I think, LinkedIn and on Facebook as mm -hmm. well, the Augment Bionics page and the stuff you guys are doing is just incredible. Um, Liz, could you kind of shed some light on how you managed to do this and pivot your business so quickly, given you're all in different locations? Yeah, um, it was definitely a team effort, I think, from the idea, which was around mid-March to the actual first face shield that was produced. It was about a week or 10 days, give or take. So um, it was it was a lot of effort from all of us. And we were all working from home at the time and isolating. Um, and so I think just having that extra time, we were all able to come together, quickly find resources, um, 
find our network and make use of that. So the university has been really helpful and um, was really helpful initially as well at that time to raise money. Um, we set up a crowdfunding page because we were doing this all on a donation basis. And mm -hmm. uh, the support that we got, I mean, I think our first goal, we surpassed that within a day or two. And so it's just been really incredible seeing our communities come together. And with all of us being so spread out around the world, we were able to have that bigger reach. Yeah, so cool. Well done, guys. I'm in awe of you. Um, so you all started working on this project throughout your degrees. And I think, am I right in saying, Iman, you were the first of um, like you three to find Augment Bionics. So how did you come across it and why did you want to be involved? Yeah, so I um, I founded um, Prosper Social Finance COC, which is the UK's first student-led social investment portfolio. Um, and as part of that, we held an event where we got um, lots of different student-led projects to kind of present um, all with a sort of um, social uh, social purpose. Um, one of those was Augment, obviously, because, um, you know, not only are we 3D printing um, prosthetics, which obviously kind of serves um, a really valuable need, but um, the the sort of USP of Augment is, is the affordability. So we try to um, produce these um, and make them as accessible to people as possible. And this was at the time, this was in my second year, so... Um, I started Prosper in the summer of my first year and we sort of got it going um, and we were already sort of a registered company at that time and, and all of that stuff. Um, and I met the two um, original uh, founders of Augment um, and um, they sort of talked to me about the project that they were doing and then also were looking to sort of um, hand it off um, because I think one, they sort of um, understood their um, kind of limited commercial awareness um, in terms of transforming Augment into a company. And that's what I was sort of approached to do. Um, so obviously I'm a neuroscience um, student. I can be interested in anything and anything. <laughs> um, and, um, and obviously Augment's really cool. So um, I took it on and then... Um, yeah and then so so kind of took on the role as as the commercial director and then later the co-founder when we become uh when we became a company and built out uh the team which obviously included uh bringing Bree and and liz onto the team um and yeah and and built that out and here we are yeah and so this is your second startup that you've worked on which is just incredible that you've done that before you even finish your degree. Um, but I'd be interested to know if you see yourself as entrepreneurial and why you decided to get involved with these projects. Is it something you were always interested in or did you just think, you know, university is a good time for this thing? Um, so yes and no. So I don't, I don't think I saw myself as necessarily entrepreneurial until really recently, until, mm -hmm. um, until I actually kind of, yeah, until maybe this year, which is my fourth and final year of university, where I was kind of starting to think about what, what I want to do next. Um, prior to that, and I had been involved in kind of really interesting projects and things before I started um, university. And um, mostly I I'm just kind of driven by curiosity of things. I really like to learn. I I think I'm, um, you know, maybe it's arrogant, but I'm not, I don't tend <laughs> to be kind of held back by the fact I don't know <laughs> what's really happening. So in terms of, um, you know, engineering and things like that, I can't 3D print um, prosthetic. I would never claim to be able to do that, but that doesn't stop me being kind of interested in it um, and yeah. uh, wanting to be able to contribute in the way um, that I think I can. Um, and so that's, always what I've been led by so uh, a kind of natural curiosity um that I think goes back before I started university um but I think that the thing that I always say with um Prosper um more so because um it was the first one that I started um that it really really didn't matter if it had gone badly <laughs> 
um and yeah. i you know um i would have still hopefully come out with with a degree um and been able to join societies and 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 made friends in in different ways and um i really wouldn't have lost anything and um you know what i gained in terms of experiences wouldn't have been a sort of equal loss if i hadn't done that um and so for me it was pretty risk free so i kind of felt able to just kind of do something because i was interested in i thought i thought it was important especially with um the the kind of uh finance element of it i understand well for me my my passion was in sustainability and social finance and and all of the good that that you can do um with um finance fortunately or unfortunately um so to have strayed a long long way from from the point and and the question that you originally asked um um yeah i think that both 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 projects while I was at university, while um, the resources and support were available, are both risk-free, and um, and therefore I, I think there was there was nothing really stopping me or, or or anyone else on the team, rather than just sort of natural curiosity and and kind of wanting to 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 make some impact while at university. Yeah, I think those points about university being risk-free, and then also it's a really good time to explore things that you're passionate about I think that could really resonate with a lot of people um Brianna and Liz what were your reasons for joining Augment Bionics and did you learn anything about yourself or about entrepreneurship through the process yeah I mean I think I uh the same as Iman where I don't think I saw myself as an entrepreneur I don't I don't know if I do still now but it was more the time where it was my final year of university doing a chemistry degree and I hadn't had any Kind of access to this more commercial side to kind of develop a business acumen and understanding so it took it as an opportunity when i i mean was like approached to apply and i thought it was a really really cool opportunity to expand way out of my comfort zone and also with the thinking that maybe the lab life wasn't really my calling in the end and to really to just try something totally new um and so i think from Augment, I mean, so with my full-time job I have now, it's in the pharmaceutical industry and um, it's a company that also has a lot of medical devices. And so in my interviews, it became a really crucial thing to talk about and to show that I obviously had a chemistry degree, but trying something new whilst at university was a really appealing thing for them, I think. And um, hopefully it was one of the reasons I got my job. So I think mm -hmm. it worked. It um, was definitely a worthwhile experience to do while at uni yeah yeah and similarly to brianna um so the summer before our final fifth year of our masters of chemistry um we found out about augment and i mean initially i was drawn to it because of the social aspect it was obviously a company that's driven by social impact and helping people which is um obviously something that's really important and something that's important to me and um i always knew that a phd was not for me but I didn't have this perfect role in mind for what I wanted to do after I graduated. And so being able to do Augment, again, like Brianna mentioned, exposed me to a lot of these commercial aspects in the business world. And I think there's no better way to learn about business than starting your own business. Um, and so that really helped me as well find my job now. So I'm part of the graduate program at Johnson Matthey. And again, I think having Augment Bionics as part of my portfolio or my resume was really crucial in terms of the interview process, but also um, what I'm doing now. So in terms of soft skills and hard skills, there's a little bit of both that's applicable to my day job. Um, and then there's also some skills that I take from my day job and back into Augment as well. Um, and then to answer your question about if I find myself entrepreneurial, yeah, I, I think that's tough. I, Probably not. And I think even during the coronavirus crisis where we were helping out so much, um, we were getting such positive feedback, but it didn't feel like we were doing, like we weren't doing anything innovative. There was tons of other companies and groups and individuals doing this. And so it felt more like something we just needed to do and something we were supposed to do and something we had to do to help out. And it was kind of our time to step up to the plate. 
um, as opposed to something entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's a bit of imposter syndrome coming in for both of you to say that you don't feel entrepreneurial, even though from the outside looking in, I would absolutely describe you all as really entrepreneurial? <laughs> I think it's quite a strange one to define as well. What entrepreneurial yeah. is it's kind of one of these words that uh, has just been like used as this label and anyone who can have a good idea. I don't know. I think what we've maybe talked about is how being part of like an entre a team uh, for a startup, you don't have to be these people that are the idea generators, the ones that think outside the box all the time. Like, of course, there are those people on our team and we wouldn't be where we are without them. But you also need some really task oriented people who are specialists in what they know. So we have strong um, people with kind of a more law background and a more economics background. So we understand the market and our market research aspect. And then, of course, we have our engineers. And so I think where I kind of class myself as someone who's someone who can get tasks done. And when we're having our team meetings, we get we have assigned tasks that we have to complete. And people kind of our trust in our different skill sets is uh, how we get everything done. So maybe the definition of, of entrepreneur is uh, if you take it more to a team level, you have to have a lot of different people to make it to make it work. Mm -hmm. I think imposter syndrome is very real, though. I definitely think I struggle with that a lot and something that's very prominent. <laughs> yeah. Iman, do you feel any imposter syndrome? I mean, uh, I've, of course, <laughs> I think in, in many ways, like from the university that we went to, to um, doing things uh, like prosper and augment in, in many different facets. And, and one, um, for me, it's broken down a little bit into um, the fact that you know, neither of my parents went to university and that I went to um, quite uh, an infamous bad way um, secondary school um, and so arriving at Edinburgh was, was uh, different and, and therefore um, obviously kind of incited uh, some um, yeah some um, imposter syndrome like tendencies um and then and i think that was mostly from a kind of background and um childhood upbringing sort of perspective um and then obviously with with business um elements to it uh there have definitely been times where it's more uh gendered um and and i yeah, and i think that the implicitly or, or explicitly um sometimes you kind of question the the sort of interactions that you've had um or conversations that you had and whether or not they would have been different if you were male um but um yeah and i think in 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 different ways um uh but i think definitely in terms of business it, it has felt um at times quite gendered. Um, uh, and I think that leads to, to things like imposter syndrome. Yeah, definitely. I agree. And so you guys, so there's three of you and then there's one other woman who's on the founding team and then the rest are all men and you're from quite a big team. So I'd be interested to know if if you all kind of feel that gendered dynamic and if you discuss it all together as women or if you kind of not suffer in silence, but just take it upon yourself and, and deal with that individually. There is definitely, an, well, and I, I don't, I think um, Brian and Liz might agree, there's definitely a different sense between what happens internally in our teams. Um, and I think especially in our commercial team, um, you know, maybe or maybe not, um, and that's more of an individual experience, but I think more so what, what I meant was when you're interacting kind of with um, people mm -hmm. outside of the team so if you're going to an event or you're uh we do lots of competitions and mm -hmm. things like that and networking um that's that's for me uh where uh it tends to be seen a lot more or i tend to at least notice it a lot more yeah i think within our team so as you mentioned there's four of us um who are women and then there's two males on the founding and commercial team um and then on the technical side it's mainly all men um, and they're all engineers. They're all very technical. They all have a technical background and kind of experts within their field. 
And we don't really interact with the technical team very much. Um, and so whether it is a sense of comfort because of gender or perhaps because we don't understand the technical side to that level of detail, um, unfortunately, we don't get to interact with them as much. And so, you know, obviously we have like big team calls, but a lot of their information is funneled through through our technical director, who is a male as well. Um, and I think just within our own conversations over the past couple of weeks, we've been thinking and have become a lot more aware of the issue that we have in our technical side and the diversity issue and that we need to try and recruit from, you know, a more diverse group of people and try and make sure that we're representing everyone in our teams. And I think as well, just to speak upon what Iman was saying in terms of the external interactions. So last year, or during my final year, I was, I went to a few competitions where Augment was um, a contender for a prize. And I think that was probably the biggest imposter syndrome that I felt because you feel so prepared within your team and everyone supports each other. And then you go out and see what these other startups are doing. And you're like, oh my gosh, I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and so we never really talked about it within our team, like whether it's something that we all felt or if it was just something that I felt, but it would be interesting to see whether it was felt throughout the whole team, like whether, you know, the males on the team also felt it, or if it was just something that is driven by just stereotypes and females just having that issue with confidence in general. Yeah, because I also found uh, that whenever you'd go to those and stand in your, because you normally stand in a booth and you, everyone mm -hmm. else has their own booth around and of course you mingle and I don't know, you kind of always sought for the allies that were the other female start startup leaders and they, you kind of would be able to share your thoughts and your feelings uh, so much more naturally and then for, I don't know, maybe it's also just my issue where you do feel like you then need to put on this big bravado when you go talk to a, a, a guy who's a, one of the uh, founders of his own startup and he's all very proud and and I maybe I, and also envy at how they can take such confidence and such pride in what they do and of course we feel that all of us feel that same way about augment but I don't know the way that it's portrayed is so different between women and men I think and I think at those competitions it was particularly evident <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the listeners can't see this, but we're on video. And as each of you are speaking, all the others were like nodding really. Like, <laughs> yes, I agree, I agree. <laughs> um, so I guess more on kind of the team aspect. So Iman, you've had experience hiring mm. before um, for your first startup, Prosper, and then for this one as well. How do you find that experience? And do you think there's any anything where you either consciously or subconsciously look for people who are like you when you're hiring? And do you think that might be why some of the teams we see, whether it's in entrepreneurship or in large companies that are less diverse than they should be? Um, so, I, I, so I think with, with both Prosper and um, Augment, we try really, really hard um, and very consciously to, um, to make sure that we're, we're not including um, too many levels of biases in in our hiring mm -hmm. processes and i think so um with prosper um so i not only um kind of was hiring the the management team but then we also uh when we train our students we do kind of successive cohorts of students that we take on for eight weeks so we've done i think five or six cohorts of that um where we have a full-on interview process and for those um we we make a, a really really um concerted effort to, to make sure that we are casting the net as as wide as possible in terms of trying to attract people from um different backgrounds and i think um when we do our recruitment events and um and i go and talk to um students and i always make um the point that I started Prosper and it was in the summer of my first year and I studied neuroscience and I literally um, came uh, from background least likely to even be here that, um, you know, <laughs> if I can do it, you're literally going to be fine. Um, and still I have those same conversations again and again where um, especially the women that I talk to just don't feel like they're going to be able to do it. Um, even though, you know, 
I've, I've done it, which means that it's definitely possible. Um, and and so um, many other um, women who've who've joined um, Prosper either on the management team or have done the the eight week program. Um, we I always uh, find that you're pushing really hard to try to convince somebody um, that they can from a kind of Comf- uh, confidence point of view um and it's quite upsetting actually because we then conversely we get i think edinburgh has you know obviously its own stereotype and i'm about to pick up to its maximum but then we then get you know um and they are typically men who who apply who you know waltz in haven't done any um prep at all don't really know um who've you know even spelt like our name wrong which is yeah, it's not difficult mm. <laughs> um on the application yeah. form um who are like this can be fine um but it is interesting um like dealing with with that kind of blinded confidence against um some like really amazing um like women who i know um that uh have so many hurdles that they internally go through just to apply um so uh so so there's that there's that element of it um and then we we try really hard to um to make sure that we're encouraging um a far more diverse pool of applicants and in terms of other forms of diversity that's also something that um, Edinburgh has, has recently um, been under fire for quite rightly in terms of um, its, mm-hmm. um, you know, ethnic diversity, neurodiversity, sexual diversity, that sort of thing. Um, and um, that's something that we also struggle with. So it tends to be that even if we yeah. are um, getting um, fairly equal numbers in terms of men and women, that they are from very similar and often very privileged backgrounds. Yeah, and I think you brought up some really good points there around the internal hurdles that women kind of put up for themselves that don't really exist. Um, And the whole confidence point as well, I think, is really important. Um, And it's funny you say that as well, because I remember when you launched Prosper Social Finance, I didn't know you at the time, but I remember seeing it come out and I was like, that sounds so cool, but I know like less than zero things about finance. So I won't bother. And it's funny now because I work in finance, but I wish that I had gone for that at the time. Um, so do you guys have any advice for people who are still at university or who are finishing that feel like there's an opportunity that they're interested in, but don't think that they're good enough for it? Yeah, I mean, I str- I have the same thing. Like I saw Prosper come out. Mm-hmm. I'd heard about Fresh Sight and I have the mm-hmm. same feelings. I had no business experience. I had knew nothing about finance, investing not really anything about consulting either. And so I felt like I had no leg to stand on. And I'm not really sure what changed with Augment, (laughs) maybe because it came through a mutual friend um, who kind of said that there was this opening and that seemed a bit more approachable than going through this formal application process. Um, Maybe because it was a bit more technology-based and maybe because it was just the final year and it was just time to just step out of the comfort zone at that point. But I think just, yeah, advice is just go for it. I mean, it's obviously a lot easier said than done, but Mm -hmm. if I could go back to my first year, I would have done all those things that I was um, intimidated to do and and scared of. Yeah, absolutely. I think, I think university is just the time where you can try anything. And I, and I think definitely with Augment, the fact that it it had this maybe front of it being science and technology Mm -hmm. and something that seems slightly comfortable. I could do, and I knew that side. And so then applying my more um, a technical background to a more commercial um, kind of output definitely made it seem that much more attainable. And it's, and then it is quite annoying that we feel that we need to have this like kind of touch point or something that makes us feel more comfortable, Mm -hmm. but you kind of have to grasp at whatever you can with that, because those are the small things that do make you feel that much more confident to, yeah, okay, I can, if I know one thing, and then I surely can use that to, to, to make a difference or to put that in my application because that will make me seem like I know what I'm talking about. Even though most of the time you don't need to know, you just you need a little mm-hmm. bit of confidence in yourself. But it's so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, and Brian, Liz, I also want to ask now because you're both in full time work. 
um, and you've not chosen to kind of stick with the startup, but you're still doing it alongside work. So I have a couple of questions around that in terms of, did you know what you wanted to do after uni? And how do you think employers felt about your work on Augment Bionic, but also I know you both were involved in other societies, so like women in STEM and Brown, I know you did hockey and rowing as well. Do you think that those things came up throughout the application process? Yeah, for sure. I mean, getting to the end of university is a pretty rough time for anyone when you have no idea what you want to do. And mm -hmm. I remember just having lists of pros and cons about whether to do a PhD or not and sitting there and pulling my hair out and not knowing what to do. And well, yeah, when I found this graduate program at Nova Nordisk, again, it was a com taking science and making it a bit more commercial because I'm in regulatory affairs and drug safety. So it's kind of the final hurdle of the R&D su like, su uh, supply chain. So it seemed like I was a bit close to the science, but then also kind of close to the commercial and the actual market access of these products. So that seemed perfect. And again, the skills that I had from Augment and what I could talk about in the interview and the being part of a small commercial team, having kind of some access to medical device regulation. And that was just a really good like starting point on the uh, in the interview <laughs> to talk about. And that's what my company was really interested in. And and I think also in terms of what you can do at university with different societies again like women in stem and playing different playing in different sports teams and all these like soft skills that you can develop that make your cv that kind of more colorful and more interesting and more things to talk about in an interview i mean unfortunately sometimes you do these things for that purpose but you also i also enjoyed them like i like mm -hmm. playing in hockey and, and rowing at university were like through my best like memories and yeah i think now in my act in my day-to-day -day job you can see how those skills um come through and it all seems worth it now yeah i mean going back to the start of the fifth year i had absolutely no idea really what i wanted to do as i mentioned i just knew that i would not be doing a phd and um probably a bit controversial after doing five years of chemistry and probably the odd one out <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of the class, who everyone was into research, and I just did not want to be stuck in a lab. Um, and it was a really stressful process, as Brianna mentioned. I mean, I think I went to the library every single Sunday and just applied to like jobs <laughs> and probably she had a very applied to like three hundred impressive Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I mean, I probably a bit over the top, but um, I think ultimately, when you find that role, like when I came across this. Uh, graduate program at Johnson Matthew, just even when I just first saw it, I felt like I could connect to it. And I felt like I'd found the role for me. And a lot of that was just because they were looking for science graduates, but also for the commercial stream, which is what I'm in, they were looking for you to apply your technical knowledge in a commercial way. And I felt like that's exactly what I'd been doing at Augment. Um, and so that, as I already mentioned, yeah, Augment played a huge role in the interview. I think it just allowed us to talk at the interview process and just have a conversation and they were really interested in the work that I was doing um, and even now during coronavirus they've seen a lot of the stuff that Augment Bionics has been doing and they being Johnson Matthew um, <laughs> and they've really liked that because I think it just speaks to what their employees are doing in their spare time and like helping out their communities um, so yeah it's, it's really only helped throughout the recruitment process. Yeah, and Brianna, you brought up something there that you, you did it all, but you enjoyed it. Has it been fun working on Augment Bionics? I mean, a lot of people go to uni to get their degree, but also, you know, to meet new people that they wouldn't meet if they had just stayed at home. Do you, do you enjoy working in the team? What's the social side like? Oh, I mean, absolutely. I think also by the time you get to your last year of university, you're kind of like, you feel you're kind of finished and maybe making new friends in the top of your list because you're just trying to get the last bits done get the dissertation written but that was kind of the best part of my fifth year because it opened up a whole new circle of friends and we and we spent a lot of time together we had a lot of meetings um but that was that was kind of a really important part of my last year and it kind of made edinburgh a different place because 
it's also when you study chemistry or we were at a different campus for far like the science campus is farther from the central campus so augment made us cool in the in the kind of social science and, and uh, <laughs> the rest of the students campus and and that um which was a big deal at for um edinburgh uni grads will will know that um james <laughs> students are not the same so it was really it was a, definitely a, a cool addition to to the to my university kind of experience for sure huh. yeah and i think even when we obviously when we were all in the same place it was easy like to have meetings and to just hang out and stuff and then obviously there was new challenges that came when we're all just kind of dispersed all over the world but then over the last few months, especially with everything that we've been doing during the coronavirus crisis, like we've been, I think there were some points where we had calls every single day. So yeah, we yeah. really connected. <laughs> yeah, that just, that our, our time zone <laughs> management is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I was impressed with your ability, Brianna, to tell me exactly what times would work to, to do for this <laughs> podcast. You're like, well, this works because it'll be this time zone. <laughs> <laughs> So just to wrap it up, um, we've got a question that we're asking all of our guests. So Iman, I'll start with you. What gives you confidence? And then we'll we'll go through to Liz and Brianna as well. Gosh, it's one of those things you don't think about. What gives me confidence is, um, I, I guess, a sense of purpose, um, like making um, an impact, feeling like what you're doing is valuable. Um, yeah, working with kind of cool and interesting people. Um, nice. Yeah, that gives me a lot of confidence. Liz, Brianna, who wants to go first? <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> um, so Brianna and a few of my other uh, flatmates from the, my final year um, presented me with the Michelle Obama book for my birthday <laughs> last year oh. <laughs> and so I think reading that book but also just in general having role models is what oh. gives me confidence and seeing other people obviously you know Michelle Obama is an extreme example we can't all be Michelle Obama but just like seeing her <laughs> story and similar stories is is what inspires me and gives me confidence yeah that is an incredible book I would recommend that to <laughs> anyone who has some t has some time on their hands agreed um, no, I was thinking about this and I think, I think what gives me confidence is, is when I like know my, when I know my stuff. So I, I think what I've learned about myself, especially from, from Augment and also from working now is that, um, if I'm giving it, given a new task, if, even if I just have a couple, a couple hours just to quickly figure out what I'm going to say and feel confident in what I know, even though I, I'm sure I do know it, but then you get into a meeting room or get into a place where you present it and you and you know the answers and you know that you're the person that has has the knowledge that you need to deliver and I think that's what gives me confidence and um and maybe that comes from being a scientist in background where you just kind of like to you like to have the data to back up the back up the conclusions but mm -hmm. I think that's that's what it is for me and also wearing a great outfit when you go to work that tends to set my day right you know absolutely that's, I, that's a big benefit of not being in the lab because now you get to have a, a proper smart casual attire <laughs> <laughs> I love that well thank you so much guys for coming on the podcast this has been really interesting for me to interview you all it's definitely been an honor you guys are incredible um, and hopefully all of our listeners have enjoyed as well I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did. If you're thinking about applying for jobs and want to know how to use your sports society and startup experience on an application, just like Iman, Brianna and Liz did, then keep an eye out for our next mini-sode with another one of our expert mentors. You can find out more about us by searching at Her Own Boss Podcast on Instagram and make sure to leave us a review and subscribe to hear the latest on finding your inner entrepreneur.